New Orleans is a very special place, culturally and a, a big city, uh, but built in the wrong place really. So it's low-lying, it's at risk of a hurricane striking it, and that's why it's protected by a system of levees. Hurricane Katrina happened in August 2005, um, and the combination of the severity of the storm and the path that it happened to take led to a storm surge of about 9 meters, so the water level was 9 meters higher than normal. There was not just water coming over it, but there, it also caused breaches, collapse of the defenses in about 50 places. The consequences were dramatic, $125 billion of economic damages and something like 1,500 people died. It was a national scale disaster, obviously, so uh, the United States Congress gave the United States Army Corps of Engineers the job to redesign and restore the flood defense system. As originally a Dutch company, I have a really strong track record in designing and, and helping operate uh, big flood defenses. The Netherlands are uh, a very low-lying country, a bit like New Orleans, uh, but very well protected. Uh, and so that experience we were able to use for the project as a whole. Uh, that was really the really big question of a city that had emptied after the storm. And the project had to essentially create confidence that this was still a place worth living in. So that was at a big scale, that was the challenge here. Do we still want to have New Orleans there, uh, where, where it is? And so the quick turnaround um, uh, of being seen to be improving the defenses and creating that confidence was very important. So this idea of resiliency, people knew that people had died because of the collapse of the defenses. What are you going to do about that? And just a single line, they have to be resilient, is just a single line, but how to translate that to something real that is meaningful and still cost effective because the budget was also limited. So how do you do that? How do you design a flood defense, a levy system that can't, that can withstand that 1% storm, but also doesn't collapse in an even more extreme storm. Uh, so I would say the timing, programming and that special resilience element, they were the key challenges. An important part was the walls like this. So historically they used like concrete eye-shaped walls. One of the main reasons why the defenses collapsed during the storm was that there was water overtopping, scouring out the ground and then those eye walls fell over. And so a big part of the different approach was to construct T walls instead of I walls. So that's an, a re, an inverse T, so the, the wall sticks up and then there's a, 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 there's a flat bit on the ground to stop it from collapsing and from the ground washing away. A key element that we did was the modeling and data analysis to determine how high the flood defenses had to be. So that's a big important part. And we also played a big role in the resiliency. Um, so that resiliency element of the remit that the engineers got is not so straightforward because that's not normally the remit that you get from a client. Normally you, your remit is design this to withstand the storm. So this was a special case and so we helped the clients to, to get their head around that. So what does that mean? How do you translate that concept to practical design rules to design and build your defense. And we also wrote the armoring manual that they developed. So how do you design a rock revetment, an armoring to, 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 to protect that landward slope? Now we had to translate originally Dutch design rules uh, into the American context. And the big difference there was tropical grass. So the grass in tropical areas like New Orleans is much stronger. So we had to use laboratory tests in a, in a big full-scale lab laboratory in Colorado and translate that to so what sort of overtopping can a good New Orleans uh, grass cover withstand. And that then fed into the decisions of so where is the grass good enough, where do we need uh, geotextile mats or where do we need rock to uh, protect that, uh, that slope. Another thing that we did in the project was uh, uh, we developed a number of smart tools, smart digital tools uh, to help the local uh, flood defense managers uh, yeah, manage flood risk. So one of them was a hurricane storm atlas, um, yeah, essentially combining information from a lot of historic hurricanes, how strong are they, uh, where do they come to land, and to help 
people predict how, big, how high the water levels and then the waves would be uh, so that they could prepare and start evacuations when there was a big storm brewing uh, out in the Gulf of Mexico. And the other thing was a levy information management system, uh, essentially a dashboard for the flood defense managers to, to, to see if the water level is here, then I need to close this and this gate and I need to start now because then I'm ready in time uh, to close the gate before the water comes. The first step in 2006 was ready on time uh, and, and by the time it was 2012, uh, well as planned, the system had been rebuilt to that 1% uh, standard, so at least that was there. And they then took a bit more time to also uh, to, to install those, those revetments and those, those geotextile mats to create that resiliency. But that's now in place. When you look at how the city has, has developed and has sort of re-emerged after 2005, well, you can, you can see that it has created the confidence that, it need, that, that was needed. The, the flood defense reconstruction after Katrina and Orleans shows the value of civil engineering to society. If the civil engineers here hadn't been able to instill that confidence by doing a good job and thinking of what actually went wrong, responding to those, those, those concerns that people have, well, the community wouldn't have had the confidence to go back. The New Orleans project for me is a great example of going to a totally different place that you've not been before, a really exciting place. Have Get your head around the challenges locally. Um, uh, in this case, for example, well, different types of grass. How does that? How how do I translate my knowledge of existing design rules to this this different context? And then do something that really helps to 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 recreate a, a city as magical as New Orleans.